Hi, welcome to Inside Church. We're so glad that you are able to join us. We trust that as you watch the message that your heart will be stirred and that faith will be built. I believe you brought an amazing word. Glory to God. Good to have good preachers in the house. Amen. Amen. Never bold to you, bold away from you. Do you understand that? Don't bold to you, bold away from you. So important. Hallelujah. So thank you, Lloyd. Appreciate that. Glory to God. Well, this is the first Sunday night again. Let me just put us all on the same page so we all understand why we're here. Because <laughs> we were doing four nights of revival. Does everybody remember why we started the four nights? Because we couldn't do this, the Sunday nights. And so if you get your faith up and you need four nights, you speak to the Lord and see if you'll still continue with the four nights. But So we want to, we just wanted to get back to the Sunday nights because it's quite a long stretch from Monday morning to, uh, from Sunday morning to Sunday, Sunday morning with, with Wednesdays. And this just gives us an opportunity for a different kind of meeting. Where's Duvall? There you are, brother. Bless you. Bless you. We're going to pray over Duvall tonight. I had to be here whether it was the last thing I did. He's leaving for Zimbabwe, some of you may know. He's going to fulfill a vision that's been in his heart for a very, very long time. I've heard him speak about it so often. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to minister the word because I think it's going to just enlighten you in some areas. Just as you step out now to take the next step into your future. Amen. 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 It's a wonderful vision. If you've had the opportunity to sit with him and let him unpack it, he doesn't always speak too much, so you've got to pull it out of him. But if you can pull it out of him, it's an amazing vision that he has in his heart. And he's been with us a very, very long time, so we're going to be sad to see you go, but you have to do what the Lord wants you to do. Hey, Duvall, that's what's important. Be a world changer, brother. Come on. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, you blessings. Look at you all pitching up here on a Sunday night. Look at yourself and say, what a blessing I am to this body. Come on. Don't you believe that? Glory to God. I want to speak, share with us a word and See what the Holy Ghost will do. Let me just commit this word. Father, thank you for this word now. And help me to deliver it as you gave it to me. But I understand that there's so much exponential truth in everything you say and do. Help me to connect with you, Holy Spirit, as you minister this word of truth. And thank you that you will quicken truths to each individual heart this evening. That which we need individually and corporately. Thank you that you will break this bread of life and nourish us with the truth of your word. In the precious name of Jesus. And we hasten, Lord, to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. Amen. When did you last read the book of Revelation? Okay, just thought I should remind you of this. Listen to this. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, things which must shortly take place. Shortly. A thousand years is just one day, and one day is a thousand years. And he sent and signified, if by his angel, to his servant, John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. Listen carefully. Blessed 
is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy. It's a promise. I've heard it said this is a play in heaven. Religion, oh, they're crazy. They're really crazy. You can't work these people out. Religious from the city. A religious denomination said this is a play. This is one of the most holy books. Listen. Blessed is he who reads. There is a promise here for each person. And those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. Hallelujah. Just in case you haven't been reading Revelation. I'm sure everybody will now make it an integral part of their diet. Said if you read the Bible, and not the Bible, if you read Revelation, there is a specific blessing that's upon reading this word. Amen? And let me help you. It's not revelations, as I hear so many say. It is revelation of Christ the King and the coming of the Antichrist. It's one revelation, even though it's in chapter form. Okay. So, verse 7. Revelation 3, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no man shuts, and shuts, and no man opens. There's no way around this. I know your works. Verse 8. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. I won't read any further now because I want to get, get into the word here. Um, all too frequently, we're frustrated. Anybody been frustrated in the last two weeks? Because we believe our progress is so slow. Anybody? Come on. Don't put your hand up. Lightning will come. No, no, I'm only joking. <laughs> Some people are good at hiding their frustration. But if you prod long enough, out it comes. So, on closer, maybe I should give you a title. Obedience, God's Open Door. Let me read it again, those three verses. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true. Talking about Jesus. He who has the key of David. He who opens and no one shuts. And shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See? I have set before you an open door. If he knows your works, the door will be open. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. So, when we get frustrated and we feel progress is too slow, we'd be well advised to have a little bit of a closer examination on our lives. Don't get into condemnation and you will see. And what it will reveal is that the decisions we have made, or rather haven't made, through excuses, 
is what's feeding our frustration. You cannot be frustrated walking in faith with God because it's life. Now the enemy may try, if you give him opportunity, he may try to bring about frustration. But I believe what, what I, we're coming towards the end of 2022, so be very good for you to make this a part of your life from here on out. Obedience, obedience, God's open door. Okay, let's unpack this a little bit. It's not a long message. The Bible says, I know your works. There's one person you can never fool, and that's yourself. You can fool everybody else, but not yourself. You can make excuses till the cows come home. But there's one person you cannot fool, and that's yourself. And so the Bible says that Jesus, that's why I said, be careful. Don't pick this up in condemnation. The truth makes you free. If you're not making excuses, you're free. There's a measure of freedom in that. We've all made mistakes. The Bible says, oh, righteous man, fall seven times, you'll get up. Now, I know your works. In other words, I know the effort and the acts of my word that you've put into action. That's essentially what he's saying. The works there is the, is the Hebrew, is the Greek word ergo, meaning to work. So that's why he says, I know your works. And notice, the Philadelphia church is the faithful and fruitful church. It's the only church of seven churches that he talks this way. So there were seven churches. But you can't just go to a church and think it's going to work. Hello? Come on. He speaks to the seven churches in Asia, a type of where we're living even today. Since the Isle of Patmos, this was happening. So this is what I want you to see. In obedience, when God opens the door, nobody shuts it. Is your faith that strong? I hear a lot of excuses as a pastor. And I understand that. But it's not helping people. Can you see? I set before you an open door and no one can shut it. How does it stay open? By faith. By obedience to the word of faith that comes to your heart. Not, he doesn't explain what it should look like. He simply says, I know your works. Well, the only works that Jesus takes notice of is works of faith. Can you see? I said to you, please don't get into condemnation because that's not the purpose. So, once the Lord has set the door before you, You still got to walk through it. He does not push you through the door. Because the Bible says in, in um, John 16, verse 13, Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guard you. You see that? And this should help us tremendously. Because as we live by faith, the Holy Ghost will guide us not to close doors, but to open doors. Can you see that? Now, it doesn't mean that the door that's open is comfortable. It was very interesting. I was up in a game park up in KwaZulu-Natal in the north. And I went to have a look at these huts 
that were built a long time ago. And through all the huts, the door is only that big. So when you go in, that's very clever. What do you have to do? You can't fight anybody like that. And you can't take stuff in with you because the door is so small. So they've got the advantage on the inside who's coming in through the door. It's just interesting. When you see it, you say, this is really smart. You with me? So, remember, an open door, Jesus is not going to force us through. And so when God gives us a prophetic word, and it may have come through a person, but I would encourage you to have it from the word even more so, or if you get a prophetic word, ask the Lord to confirm it in the word. Okay? Because you need faith to walk into that word. And if you don't have the word, prophecy is not going to give you faith. The word of God gives you faith. It's quite simple, eh? When you think of it. Now, I was thinking of where Sarah Lee's at um, college in the U.S. Every time I go there, I'm intrigued by Oral Roberts, what this man did. He was healed of tuberculosis. Where's Mason? That's right, hey, Mason? Yeah. I mean, he was just a frail man. And if you see what he built... And he never owned a business. I said he never owned a business. He built a multi-story. It still stands to this day. Ho hospital center. It's still a hospital and other, using other, they're doing other things in there now. And this man bought acres of land all by faith. Why? Because God set an open door before him, he believed it and walked through it. And that legacy continues to this day. He's out of the earth for many years, but the legacy of his faith continues. And now because of his faith, my daughter gets to walk through a door at that university that she wanted to go to, and her life is now impacted by his faith. You getting this? Because of his faith. We are sitting in a building because somebody a hundred years ago decided they're going to walk through a door and build this church. You with me? So only obedience will open God's door. It's, n it's actually not complicated. So, but going through the door, I hope you're all getting this. So I'm trying to really keep it. It really is simple. Our assurance is to steward the measure. The measure becomes the door. Watch this. Let me help some people here in case they're not aware of the scripture. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Open door. 
See how God nullifies excuses by the truth of His Word. And the reason is because He loves us and we're supposed to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Amen. So our assurance is to steward our measure of God's Word. We are cultivating our next step through the next door. If the Lord released me, I could share some stuff with some individuals here of the door that you're not going through. Maybe you're aware of it. So by the truth of God's word, that's the only way doors are opened. And I want to be very careful here because there are so many people, believers in particular, that live by circumstantial evidence. And that is the worst con the devil can put before you. So here we go. Don't think positive circumstances is an open door. Seeming positive when he came to Eve, he gave her something to admire. He didn't come to her and say, listen, old hag, do you want to be like God? <laughs> he didn't say that. He presented a wonderful picture of her future. But it was all circumstantial. And in fact, behind it was death. So when we, when we look at the truth of God's word and it opens a door, reason will not be a part of our vernacular in that conversation. Neither will, well, it must be God because there's a door open. That's the one on the 16th floor that has no staircase. When you walk through, you go down. Come on, family. I can't tell you how much destruction I have seen from people who live circumstantially. They don't have to. They don't have to. So I can't go on circumstances, good, bad, or ugly. Has God said? If God has said from His Word to me, that's my door. It's open. And I use that word to motivate where I'm going. I want to try and... Some... Maybe I need to go there. So Ephesians 4.27, maybe I'll go there. Busy arguing with myself here. There are many people who have never walked through the financial door of God. They live minimalistic, basic, but it's not God. Now you're still going to go to heaven. Some years ago, God said to me in prayer, He said, your business is going to explode. And He gave me some word. And He said, and when that happens, you be very careful of your heart. So I've got it written. In fact, I forgot my phone, otherwise I could have given, given you the actual word He said. Now, this happens to be in the financial realm. Okay? But that is an open door. Now, the devil tried to shut that door so many times. But the more he tries, the less he succeeds. And so we see 
God's mandate on that open door becoming a reality. But all the while, it takes faith, right, to walk through the door. Because you can't always see and feel what's transpiring. Are you with me? But the truth is, God doesn't lie. And we make excuses for God not answering us. For God. We don't have to make excuses. So that's one aspect. And that's happened during COVID. How does that work? It does in God. He gave me an open door many years ago. He said, by, by many or by few, I will do what I've told you. So in other words, what he's saying is you don't need endorsement from 40 people before you step through what he's told you to do. If he says it, that settles it. Can I get an amen? amen? So the Bible says in Ephesians 4.27, Give no place to the devil. Don't you ever let me hear, God, shut the door. Show me the scripture. If he has spoken, now if he shuts it in that context, but you won't even get to know that it's shut, you just shouldn't go there at all. But if he shut a door, he doesn't do it through destruction, he does it through obedience by faith. So, for instance, in our lives, I would get a fantastic job offers, and the Lord would say, no. Because if I had taken them, I wouldn't be here today. I would have gone through a door that wasn't God. Hello. This must be God. I'm a tither. Look what they've offered me. It's all back to the Garden of Eden again. Can you see? So when God opens doors, you'll know about it. But it has to come out of His Word. Not from people. Now, he may use people, but you would have already had his word. You see, he says, I know your works. In other words, you are living by faith in his word. Amen. So, I'm going to close out here just now, shortly. There are sequential doors. Thirtyfold. Huh? Who's saying that? Sixty. Hundred. Each door is dependent on obedience. Every door is obedience. Every door. Now I've been asked, where do you live? I don't know. I live in obedience and I'm blessed. What can I say? Am I at 30, 60, 100? I don't think I'm at 100. Because to me, that's the perfect will of God. Amen? Amen? But I want you to see how important this is. Every step is dependent on your and my obedience. It's a promise, but you have to walk through the door. God said it, so the door's open. Now you need the faith which he's given you, because he said it, I'm going to unpack it a little bit, watch how it works. It says like this, 
It's dependent on obedience in hearing. Now, hearing is not sitting around with a lot of garbage being spoken. This hearing that he's talking about is understanding the word mandate that he has given you from the word. So there's an understanding. You don't just, like some fuzzball, walk through a wall, you know. You walk through the door in your understanding because there's a scripture that says, count the cost. Do you understand, family? So it's very important that we get these simple truths. They ours. And then the Bible says, receiving to the word, Jesus speaking in John 4. That word receiving is you and I have to consent. He doesn't force it on us. Now we say, no, we know that. No, listen. He won't force it, so don't complain if you're not there. Because you and I have to consent to his blessing. Are you with me? The people say, ah, oh, I don't. Well, if you walk in his word and you're obedient to his word, then you are consenting. And then the Bible says, you have to allow the fruit to grow. Go with me to Mark. We're just about done. Mark 4. You see, many people have visions, but they can't birth them. Because vision comes out of the redemptive revelation of Christ. Maybe one day I should speak on vision. Because it will test you to the hilt. Every step, if you don't know who you are in Christ, He'll trip you up. Watch this. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed, remember allowing the fruit to grow, on the ground. And should sprout. Oh, sorry. And should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. What is that? Sweatless anointing. If you sweat, that's not faith. Now, of course, we perspire because it's hot. That's what I'm talking about. But if you are working your hands off, I'm not talking about being diligent. That's a different game totally. But listen, you should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. You know not how. Just like you know not how, he opened the door. But when you go through the door, guess what happens? You start to be, walk in understanding of the fullness of what he said in that word to you. Then the Bible says, For the earth yields crops by itself. See, the blessing, you can't work it. But the Bible said, He knows your works, works of faith, not works of toil. Works of faith, not works of toil. It doesn't mean we sit on our butt and do nothing, but we do what we are told to do. Activity doesn't necessarily constitute God's involvement. I can tell you that from ministry. I could be running around like a scorded cat. What does that look like? I don't know. I've never seen one. 
Watch this. For the earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, door, 30-fold. Then the head, I'm just putting it in there, 60-fold. Then the full grain in the head, 100-fold. How long does a vision take? Your life. Hello. Your life. That's how long it takes. Because you see, in God, vision never stops. As you are faithful, so he adds increase to the vision that he never revealed before. Still the same vision, but he's just adding more. But when the grain ripens, he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Open door. You will know. How can I know? Do you know when a peach is green? Do you? You're not sure. How do you know a peach is green? Because you know. Same with the Word. The longer you spend time in the Word, you know. You know the ways of God, not of man. You know the ways of God. Let me encourage you in your vision. If you need man to open your vision, you're going to need man to keep your vision. You better be drawing from God. Come on, family. Hey? Let's close this out. I think I'll leave it there. So, we're not going to start at 60-fold. God's not confused. He's going to start at 30-fold. And this doesn't have to be ministry. This can be your marriage. This can be raising your children. This can be your place of employment. It all applies. I say this, and it sounds like a good old Christianese, but I don't mean it in that context. Christians should be sought after because they should understand diligence and to walk in the blessing of God. Because remember, Abraham, Abraham's blessing is upon us in Christ Jesus. Now we can talk about it, but shouldn't we start seeing some of this? When are we going to see it? Come on, family. So, an open door. This is what I want you to say to yourself tonight when you go home. No more excuses. I would have prayed, but I, I'm so tired. Excuse. So we can go on. Are these things real? Yes. And the more the enemy can hear these things coming out of your mouth, the more you're giving him place in your life for more excuses. Can you see? So God has set before us an open door. So this is what the Lord said to me when I was just waiting on him. He said, tell him it's prophetic. Because it came out of revelation. They want a prophetic word, they've just had it. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Holy Ghost has brought a corporate prophetic word to eliminate excuses so that we can go on in the fullness not being frustrated and I want to implore you in the name of Jesus find out what is the open door before me 
because they should be spiritually, mentally, socially, physically, and financially should be. There should be open doors. I'm not saying multiple doors in one area. I'm saying in each area there should be an open door. So if I had to pick on our American guest, why did God choose him out of 330 million Americans whom I didn't even know well? I didn't know him. I met him only a few months before he came out here, personally. What is that? Open door. Can you see? Now, it doesn't mean you have to go to America for an open door. <laughs> but I just want you to think and allow God to really get this into your heart. It's so very important. I'll give them that, Lord. Maybe it's because of the things we're seeing. Get a hold of this. I'll release this and then I'll pray over um, Duval. He has an open door for you. You want to write this down, Kelly? And then you meditate on it. It's in yellow in my Bible. And I'm starting to see the first little signs of this. You're meditating on it for a long time. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper. And the treader of grapes, him who sows seed, the mountains shall drip with sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. It is a prophetic word of the church. How many do you know that are living here? I'm not telling you to chase money. I'm telling you to chase God so He can change your circumstances. Are you with me? Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper. Listen to the words. How can the plowman overtake the reaper? And the treader of grapes, him who sows seed. The mountains shall drip with sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. Open door. Man, aren't you glad Sunday nights are back? <laughs> yeah, good time. Thank you, Pastor Craig. I'm going to take up the offering real quick. I'm going to read from Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 7. It says, On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him, talking about Jesus, to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing the nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put a little out from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we have toiled all night, but took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled the boats so that they began to sink. And so, tagging on to Pastor Craig's message is this, that our obedience unlocks the miraculous. And Peter's obedience opened a door into God's supernatural provision. And so I want to encourage you this morning, Peter heard what Jesus did, and he responded. When we sow our seeds tonight, let's hear 
And in obedience to what he says, let's respond. In obedience to that amount that he places on your heart, give in obedience. But we always say the Bible says, do not give under compulsion, you know, for God loves a cheerful giver. Give in obedience, not to man, not in obedience to inside church, but give in obedience to what the Holy Spirit says to you. Because when we walk in obedience to what the Holy Spirit is saying, as Pastor Craig said, that's what opens the door. Even in this area, it's in every area of our lives, even in this moment right now, we give in obedience we live our lives out of obedience. And even when we sow our seed, when we give our tithe, we do so in obedience to what He says. Because that's when He knows He will work. He will open the miraculous. He will bring in the, the net load of fish. Amen. All right. So, Pastor, um, Pastor, I said Pastor Stephen. <laughs> Stephen put on an appeal this morning. So, if you, if you want to partake in that, please specify on your envelope, specify on your zapper, specify on your EFT what your seed is, if it's a uh, seed, if it's a tithe, or if it's a special offering of honoring. Um, please do that. Uh, the ushers can come by. Uh, any announcements? Yes. <laughs> my mind. Um, if you could not find parking on Florida Road tonight, just that they be aware that there is still parking up at Wallace Road. It's both Sunday morning and Sunday evening. There are still security guards there to watch over your vehicle. Um, there's lights down the snicket where you can walk down safely. There's people watching you. Um, so there's nothing to fear in that. And people watching over your vehicle. So if you cannot find parking on Florida Road, you can park up at Wallace Road. And then also we have baptisms coming up, water baptisms. If you have not been baptized in water as yet, on your way out of church this evening, you'll see the welcome desk outside. You'll see a form there when you can fill in your details. And then very lastly, we want to get our WhatsApp messages to you. So if you're not receiving WhatsApp messages from us, um, please put your details on that form so we can contact you. Uh, you will have to save us as a contact on your phone, but we'll give you all that info. And then, you can let, then we can let you know what's happening at Inside Church. Amen. Thank you for watching. Join us again next week to stay in touch with all that God is doing at Inside Church.